Okay, sounds good to me. Hi everybody and welcome to the Cash Plasma Reactor Group for Tuesday, July 18th, 2017. Once again, we are gathered here on Tuesday nights continuously for four and a half years or something like that. It's been a long time, I can barely remember. And, uh, We'll continue to do so in the foreseeable future. And what we do here in the Keshe Plasma Reactor Group is, well, surprisingly, we talk about Keshe Plasma Reactors and uh, all kinds of topics under the sun, depending on if we can uh, jam it into our, our schedule here. Uh, usually we have stuff even up to the last minute that people are wanting to explain and talk about. And we'll just see as we go because I play it by seat of the pants. I never know what is going to come up in this show and very seldom organize it beforehand. But uh, we shall see. I do understand that uh, Mr. Chen would like to do a little presentation on the neutron and proton and electron and so on and uh, maybe that will be something we can perhaps begin with but what we usually do here is begin with something from Lee Coates I haven't heard from Lee too much lately and uh, wondering what's up there Lee do you have uh, something you want to show us today or talk oh, about why not? <laughs> all right let's get you pinned up okay. there Busy working doing a basement renovation, so having to oh. stay up late. Oh yeah. I've been uh, trying to make a different. Or I, for the past two years, I've been making my CH3 gans just with a with a nano coated plate and an iron bar. And of course, three or four months ago, Mr. Kesh said that's not the way to do it. So I did a. I think I told you guys about a run I did. Uh, I don't know, two, three months ago, I was using a uh, uh, galvanized steel stud and a galvanized chunk of rebar. And uh, that ran its course for about a couple of months. And uh, out of the galvanized rebar, all I got was uh, the CH, CO2 and, uh, and zinc oxide gants. It never, never, I never, never even turned pink. It was just white on white gants on the, in the container. And the one with the uh, steel stud, for the most part, it was, again, white gants. And then towards the very end of the, the run, uh, the zinc got used up on the, on the steel stud, and then it, I got a little bit of pink in it. And then it, uh, that's about, then it quit. So I finally I went out and I bought chicken mesh. And the, the, I don't know whether we can see this on this thing here. I think I stirred it up carrying it over here, but I had a, a quarter inch of uh, CO2 zinc oxide gants on the bottom. And then once all the zinc sort of wore off the chicken mesh, then I got the, the I guess, CH3. So I'm just wondering what, what you other guys are doing, because right now that means I got a mixture of of zinc oxide co2 and and ch3 in this pot is what i'm i'm thinking and i'm just wondering what you other what you guys are doing to get a more pure uh, ch3 gans and what are your plate combinations there again well this is a nano this is a i got get better lighting this is a nano coated copper plate mm -hmm. and uh chicken chicken wire chicken mesh and it's just tied together with a nano coated wire. Okay. This is after about three weeks. So I got about half an inch of gants on the bottom. The first quarter is mostly as a whitish gants, and then the top quarter is a is the reddish gants. Okay. Any uh, comments from anybody on that in particular? So chicken wire, it seems to be a good choice. So let me show something. Uh, this has been made with uh, 
a simple uh, iron plate because of misunderstanding. It had no uh, zinc. And this other has been weighed uh, with uh, uh, galvanized uh, galvanized uh, iron. And uh, there is uh, some difference even in color and in behavior and structure. Now your your galvanized iron did the did the, the zinc get used up on it and you actually had exposed iron in in, uh, in your it get, gets uh, thinner and thinner. But let me show something. This is a strong neodymium magnet from, uh, uh, how to say, a uh, hard drive. Let's leave it here for a few seconds. How do you like it? Looks like lots of magnetics in there. Mm, this looks like rust. Iron uh, oxide of some sort. Mm -hmm. It's an uh, iron oxyhydroxide. So this is what you get if you have no zinc. Yeah, you have less of that. Yeah, you can see a tiny little bit there. Like still raise, still raise some, but not so much. Eventually, we can use magnet to separate and to purify it. That black color, it's uh, the magnetical part the magnetic part and that that will uh, change its color as soon as uh, it will lose uh, the magnetism so some better ways are needed you see this it's still there hmm. so this is the way how to test what you produced so don't expect this uh, to have the same behavior Um, let's see something else. Just let me free up this wire. So here are two setups with same kind of plates. Uh, now coated copper on one side and uh, galvanized iron on the other side. It's same salt, it's same salinity. And look, one is producing uh, something orange color and the other is producing something of green color. But they are one near the other. What's your opinion on that? Do you have a different connection on the plates? Some sort of uh... same twisted nano coated wires. Twisted nano coated wire. And it's producing uh, some amino acids on the top, of course. Not too much, but it's producing it's same salinity, same. They, they started in the same day. And there's a huge difference. The only difference is due to the position is that uh, this has uh, the galvanized iron and on both sides of it, there is a copper and copper even though the other copper is in another uh, box. And this one is nothing like that uh, on its uh, other side. Eventually I will try to steer it and to do the magnet, the magnet test. At least on that one with the reddish color. 
last I need a special tool for it. It doesn't uh, take any black stuff. And the other, of course, doesn't react as well. So this seems to be better. So could could you um, could you explain again, uh, Shander, what the difference between the two setups were and wh why you position. figure position? Just the position is enough to uh, cause a difference. You figure, and the one on yeah. the left, the greenish one, is uh, uh, you said it had a copper, another copper plate beside it or something. This is. It has the neighbor one, which is the CH three box. Yeah, okay. So this is near to the CH3. <laughs> and one flipped to do something orange, the other flipped to some other uh, condition and is doing something else. Hmm. Amazing. Let's steal that too. With a fresh stick. And another thing, one last time I produced uh, this one, I had uh, near to its box that uh, zinc oxide uh, or uh, CO2, which was produced in the first, you know, first, the first is producing uh, something whitish. So that I extracted all the ways. So I, I don't let to uh, be mixed. This is most probably zinc oxide. It was floating on the top a lot with something very white. And this is from the other. And last time when I made uh, this uh, CH3, I had the extracted uh, zinc oxide uh, CO2 near it. And uh, Look to uh, what happened with it. In a short time, it became greenish. Originally, it was a whitish, creamish color. And after I, it stayed near to the CH3 box, it became slightly greenish color. So something similar to this. Hmm, that's a good observation makes it sort of hard to be standardizing things in a way we have to be very very careful of our surroundings and environment yeah my brother said that uh, in a place where he hires a room to stay uh, during the week time because he works at a long distance from his house so it's not so good to drive 100 miles every every day so he goes home only on the weekends he hired the room and there he tried to make a CH3 and it became black. Such a greenish, bluish, mystical black. Another thing what happened, so he, he set up uh, the box and he had nearby another box producing uh, uh, CO2, another producing copper oxide. And he left to the job, to the night shift. When he returned, it was a storm with a black, black cloud right above uh, his house. Um, it's, he, has an, he hired an apartment only at a uh, higher level, higher store. And uh, when he entered in the room, it was water sprayed at around two meters around the uh, CH3 box. Not only in the room where he was, uh, he, he set it up, but also into the next room 
behind the wall. But on a radius about two meters, everything was sprayed with water. And also the wall was sprayed with water. He checked the roof. That, that was dry. So it was no water leaking in. But the grains which he produced uh, became that black color. Such a greenish, bluish uh, black. And something happened. Either the storm brought up some conditions with that uh, black cloud, or did that attract that black cloud? He is not sure about it. Anyway, he didn't like uh, what happened and everything sprayed. And he got very emotional and he just disposed all of it. He got rid of it. He thought to put it into his car and to drive home, but he thought, so however, uh, what, what would hap happen? If that will have some stronger effect, seeing the water around, and if he will fall asleep while driving, so he didn't get that. But sometimes strange things happen. Well, that's quite a story, Shandor. <laughs> yeah. And recently, if you watched uh, the discussions on the Skype chat group, you see it was uh, Zoltan who was trying uh, to do something like deuterium according to so-and-so descriptions and he applied such a current, uh, such a 20-30 milliampers on uh, his plates, he set up for uh, CH3 and again what he got you see uh, two boxes with a similar setup. That little thread, I think it's a bit of uh, extra hot glue because he, he covered the top of uh, the boxes. And what he got, uh, one is a black, uh, which is a greenish black. And the other with same voltage, same plate, same conditions, but different place. He got something reddish, which yesterday started to make a lot of bubbles. That's more bubbles than I've seen in any experiments. Yeah, and uh, this is covered, but it's about 23, 33 milliamps here, according to his say, in the zero, 0 0.8 volts. So it's a pity he is not here now, because he would have something more to say. And uh, this is... Uh, uh, the gas which he produced in that one, which was the dark one. This is how it looks like. Yeah. It's a dark, bluish, greenish uh, thing. He's thinking, is it deuterium uh, property guns uh, or guns with deuterium property or whatever? Not sure how we would measure that. <clears throat> Interesting. Um, Mark I asked him to, yesterday evening. I asked him. I talked with him and I asked him to measure the pH. He said already he uh, rinsed it once, but he measured the pH. It was around eight. Eight. Hmm. Um, thank you, Shandor. Mark, you had your video on there for a bit. Did you have something to add about the uh, the iron gans, perhaps? Well, just for to try to help Lee out. Yeah, I want to get back to Lee here, but uh, you had something you wanted to add, I think. Well, I just wanted to show him because he had different questions about CH3, and well, I've been making it quite some time too, so, but. I make it a little, you know, I don't make my CH3 with any power at all. No power, just the air, just the air bubbler. Oh, yeah, you I, use the bubbler, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I just use, um, you know, like uh, maybe about a month or so ago, we did the math on the FE, the iron. Um, Shandor did the math to find out if it was equal, the the... the because what I use is just a, um, 
I just use a steel bar or just a steel plate. And then the other plate I use, I try to nano coat it. I just put it in the caustic like we do um, anything else and just uh, nano coat the other plate, you know, the steel plate. And, and then some runs, uh, you know, I use that um, uh, carbon stick uh, maybe a couple of times. Like the last one on the, um, see, I'm going to stop using that carbon because I know that that starts to add a lot of um, energy to your like, see, if you look at the uh, the two uh, CH, you know, that were made with the bio salts to the, uh, uh, I would it would be the right the right side there, those two, um, and they were made in two different containers. They will not settle down from the day I made them. I mean, there's stuff on the bottom, but it it's it has found its. I mean, there's diff there's like five or six different layers, um, and Shandor tried to explain that it was that it that it had different um, field strengths, you know, and I think that's because of the carbon in it too. Maybe I don't I'm not a hundred percent sure, but both of these, all these Gants or all these C like like the jug, the dark one in the uh, gallon jug there, that was just made with the. Um, Epsom salt and the uh, potassium, and I just did that the same way with the plates and the air bubbler. And it's a 30-day run, and you know, the, I, I mean, each different, each one of them use. There's one, two, three, four. I've got five different types of CH3s made with five different types of, you know, different like. Um, salts, Himalayan salt, um, uh, just regular sea salt, um, the, the 12 bio salts, um, and like I said, the um, um, Epsom salt with the potassium. So I mean, it's just the different, t but now it's just a, a point of trying to learn how to use them. I, you know, that's where we're at now is, you know, the the different degrees of what the what the CH threes can do for us is where we're at now. You know, it's you know, with with you know now now once again we go back to where where, where we started again is that the pH and all of them are different. Um, and I started taking you know back in you know February, but then every you know people were telling us, oh, don't take the pH. You don't need that. It's you know there's no use in doing that. Well. You know, it's a lot of work, especially you don't want to do any cross contamination with your um, your your. Uh, I have a digital one, so you got to clean it in between each one. It's a lot of work to do, but now I'm now we found out that it's a little bit more important than we had first thought. So, I, if that helped you at all, Lee, maybe I don't know. So I, I just wanted to throw that out to you. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Have you uh, tried putting a magnet beside yours, to, uh, the ones you're using with the nano coat iron bar and the iron bar to see if if you're getting iron oxide or? Yeah, it, you can get a little bit of it. You can actually make the CH3 jump because there's still particles in there. This is this stuff was I would say is a oh, there it is. You can see it. Is that happen with the bio salt ones? Well, yeah, you just try it. No, it doesn't do it with the bio salts. There's nothing mm. in there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And that's two dimium magnets right there. So, but then on like the one, you know, like right here, I can take a whole pile of it right up the side. <laughs> Yeah, wow. that's, 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 I get the same result from the old way I used to do it with the. Yeah, you can kind of tell the old way. Yeah, there's a lot of, you know, um, it would be iron oxide, you know, just the, what fell off. And then I tried, you know, to, uh, I don't know if it was this one or that, it must be this one here that I, I uh, tried to run it through a, a, a real fine mesh um, coffee filter, 
a gold coffee filter. And it seemed to take a lot more of that stuff out, that black stuff out. And there's, this one has less than both of these. I mean, these I can ride these up to, you know, take it all the way up the side. Whereas this one, you can't really do it. So this one was a little bit cleaner application by running it through the, um, it's, I got it right here. I just put it through this. Can you see? Yeah. So that, that's interesting. Then the, the, the black particles or the magnetic particles must be bigger than that mesh size primarily then compared to I the other so. stuff. It'd be less nano material and more macro or more of the matter level chunks basically uh, is the way way it seems. Yeah. Hmm. So that's, I don't know. Was that's a good idea. Way? Good idea with that filter. I wondered how they would work with Kansas. And well, technically you know, if the Gansas are nano they should pass right through the filter very easily. So if there's chunks being caught, then that would be the bigger, bigger pieces for sure. So if that helps you, Lee, that's kind of like my, uh, kind of my couple of my little tricks. Okay, Mark, one other question. Uh, what, what range of the pHs you have there? You've got from 6.0 to 6.3. Is that pretty much the range? Yeah. I, you know what? I, and I, like I said, I, I never even really took the, um, uh, pH is on the bio cells yet. I just, you know, when we said, yeah, I mean, everything just kind of was coming to a head. This is, I just pulled this all apart when uh, we were just kind of asked to kind of stand down. So I didn't know if I should be playing with anything. So I just, you know, was, this is to me is more of a discipline because I really want to touch the Gans. I want to, you know how it is. We're just, you know, how I am. I'm I'm constantly thinking of it, but but what it really did for me here in the last couple of weeks is uh, it helped me to focus on some of the things like helping people that I you know I'm so confident now with our uh, with the knowledge that we have with uh, some of the things that help people and you know pain like as far as the spray goes and um, the Gantz water with the uh, uh, zinc oxide. I, I mean I have a a few, a good handful now of people that are starting to use it that, um, you know, I can actually, gonna, I'll be able to report back on a good 10 people now that I've actually felt comfortable enough to give a gallon of it to each of them with some spray bottles and some squirt bottles so that they can apply it. I, I, I gave them some instructions how to use it, um, where, you know, when to use it, how to use it. Um, I gave my a, 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 an ounce, a little ounce cup, and I told them that you should just try a half a cup, a half an ounce in the morning and a half an ounce, you know, in the early evening, just to, so that your body can get adjusted to the um, CO2 and this um, zinc oxide. That's, I just started them out on, the, on that basic CO2 uh, zinc oxide just to make the, their insides happy, to get that emotion started to, to, you know, I planted the seed that this could possibly help, you know, I'm not, I don't guarantee anything to them, but they're good enough people that I can have enough confidence. They've known me long enough now that I've done this long enough now that they are willing to say to me, hey, well, well why don't you give me some of that stuff? Finally, I, they've, I've had a few people say, hey, can you give me some of that stuff? What do you call that stuff? What is that stuff you got there? <laughs> That's great. They get their curiosity going, and uh, then you get to satisfy that. That's that's wonderful. So that's so for me. This this little bit of downtime, you know. Um, I mean, my my thinking was, well, you know how that was. I I got this big project going on here, and you try to just pull back the hands, and oh, so so I'm mm -hmm. occupying my time in other ways and listening into all the uh, great information we're getting. And, um, you know, I'm formulating some ideas that, uh, you know, the information that we're receiving and, you know, uh, I look forward to how we can learn. Uh, we're the source 
of uh, that uh, power, you know, as uh, you know, we're really getting down to the nitty gritty where uh, the uh, the nucleus of, of it, you know, the we now know that the middle of that nucleus has a proton, a neutron, or the neutron has the proton and the electron, and it splits away. But in the middle of that neutron, that that dark middle is where that power is coming from to push and pull in that neutron to push that electron and proton outside that field. Once we can figure out what's going on inside that little middle hole there, bingo. We got the motion. We'll, we'll know how much is going into that blackness and how, because we already know the end result of what's coming out of it is the neutron or the, uh, the proton or the, uh, the electron and the proton are, are being produced by that um, neutron. It's, I'm not a chemist, so <laughs> forgive me if I'm saying this wrong, but I understand the principle, the principle matter of that, that, that beginning uh, nucleus and then how it's being pushed out to make more matter as it reproduces itself. My question would be, to, if I was to ask Mr. Kesh, what holds the, you know, as it goes, as that produces itself, how, where does it say to stop itself to hold form? You know what I'm saying? So as, as these, um, the, the electron and the proton are produced from that neutron, how, you know, it goes out so far, it has to some sort of, something is telling it to stop at that point or it does not have enough energy or or it's time to take shape you know take form and that would be my question is you know as it as it goes outward how or what dictates the form of that energy you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so there yeah. has to be you know what i'm saying there the pushback has to be where you know the energy is being produced by it in a you know in an outward way but at a certain point, you know, or is it infinity that that, that con constantly keeps building out into the universe? Well, he talks about the, also the fields around the uh, entity influence it uh, quite a bit. So whatever environment that proton electron gets sort of born into, that that will determine a lot uh, what they're what they're doing. Um, Can I interject? Yeah, who, who's that, sir? It's me. It's Vince. Oh, Vince, jeez. Okay, go ahead, Vince. Yes, please interject. Um, uh, can you bring up the cell dividing in, uh, like, the first cell that divides when somebody gets pregnant? First division? I don't know. There's animations and there's, uh, like, Wikipedia or something, because I, I think it... Uh, from my mind, it shows what we're talking about. You have one cell, it divides, and it doesn't divide from the outside, it divides from the inside. Yeah, good point. Maybe we can come up with a picture of that. Um, uh, we can get into that a bit more. Mr. Chin wants to talk about that as well. He's got some theories and ideas to talk about that. Um, I can look for something. Maybe I wanted to get back to Lee there. He's got something else he wanted to show as well. I'm not sure if we're done with this CH3 GANs even yet. So um, <clears throat> maybe we can talk with Lee and I can look up uh, something on Wikipedia here and try to find something. You want to uh, go ahead there, Lee? Or Yeah, where I was leading into the... Uh, with the CH3 is I was trying to make some tritium gants, okay? Uh, if you can highlight my video again. So I had a nano-coated copper plate and I had a, a zinc uh, plate here. It's it's all deteriorated and, and uh, it's gone now. It was just a piece of zinc rolled up into a, a rod shape. And then I had three different types of uh, CH3 that I produced over the years in these little bottles. Uh, I got a plastic 
sort of lid on my pot and I used electrical taped around the outside edge so that uh, no air could get in there. And uh, so I ran that, I got on the bottom, you know, I got some uh, CO2 and uh, another half inch of zinc oxide on the top. But I was, uh, it was my coffee cup. Uh, I was expecting a, co a color change in one of these, or, and uh, nothing happened. So, ah, for that you need uh, to have uh, in, all in a closed container. Yep. Well, that's that's um, what I did. A plastic lid. Uh, you know, yes, sealed. but uh, uh, the CHT should be not closed. Let me explain a little. Okay. So you make a, a normal uh, CO2 capture kit. This is nano coated uh, copper. Uh, this is zinc. Okay. You have them interconnected. Yep. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So here in the middle, you create a condition to capture carbon. Now. Uh, you close this uh, box so you don't let the carbon from the air to go in. And you place inside on a tray, you fix it somehow here, above uh, the level of the water. So here is the, uh, the water level. And here you put your CH3. But you let this open. So if you close it, how can you expect to get anything out? Because you close it in matter state. You have to uh, keep this tray uh, open. And uh, for this uh, uh, kit will be no other source of carbon available than the carbon from here. So you extract this carbon. So what you will have left? H3. Supposedly, yes. Okay, thanks, Shandor, because I, I didn't realize we had to have an open open container on the top. So. Yep. So right. I, will, I, I will retry that one. Breaker, this is Denny. Uh, Shandor? Yes. I think we learned again this week that that someone dried the uh, the CH three GANs after they had it in the kit, yes. and and in, by doing so, it, it, it he got some uh, deuterium. All possible. And so, uh, so the liquid. The, it, well, it was in the liquid state before he dried it. He was it, he was getting the uh, the tritium, and after he dried it, uh, he got some deuterium. That was what Mr. Kesh explained what he got by the kind of color that he had uh, with the system. And I think he, if you, if uh, I mean, I, I recall that he said that. It was a, like a bluish gray, and uh, and that many spaceships would have that type of color, silver. Yeah. Uh, how silver did he exactly? How did he do it exactly? I think, from what I heard, was that, and I'm, I may have to go back in and listen. Is that he dried it, and once he dried it, he he started getting this a change in color. So he dried the CH three. He dry yeah after he's uh, he put it through his uh, his uh, uh, system to get uh, tritium. He then dried it the the material that that he made as tritium. And once he dried it, uh, it started to change color, more of a silver silvery gray. But then he continued to dry it, and it got more black. Mr. Kesh then told him that. It was the silvery gray that was uh, the uh, deuterium. Maybe so. Well, that's how I understand it. Of course, 
Uh, I have yet to do any kind of experimentation and I uh, and listen acutely to hear other people's uh, experience about it as well. Some more description would be needed for us to understand what he did exactly. Right, and I'd so have to... What I understood until now that he used such a dried uh, CH3. But how did he use it? How uh, was he set up for tritium? That we don't know. No, what I understood was that he, he, was, he went through the process of making tritium. In other words, he had his CO2 kit sealed with his CH3 opened on the inside like you just drew. Yes. Then once he got that material, he dried that material. I see. And once he so dried... color after it was dried and not before. After it was dried, it would begin to change its color into the silvery gray and then, then into a darker black, a darker gray or a shades of deep gray, black. So that, uh, I just have to listen to it over again and I just have to get uh, uh, more experience myself in doing something like that. And I have none right now because I've been holding off. Uh, and so the only other thing I'd have to ask in, in this situation is how are, how are people, who is making the actual hydrogen GANs and how they're doing that? I still have to learn that. Yeah, is there anybody that can add to that? Uh, Zoltan uh, asks, can anyone show deuterium and tritium? What color are they? <clears throat> I think you were just describing the color of, uh, of those. So, Is that the idea? Is that the silver, silver gray and then black, basically, is the way it goes? Well... All I know, the silver gray was, was what Mr. Kish called deuterium. And uh, I don't know what the color is for tritium. And uh, I have to go back through and study some of that stuff. And, and uh, I've missed quite a bit of it. So I need to go back through and, and listen more acutely. Yeah, I thought the tritium was supposed to be a greenish type gans. So, but... Uh... That's okay, I was I, expecting uh, my my reddish grants to turn turn color a little bit on the greenish side, but uh, nothing happened. So, well, we we kind of understood that you your your uh, little containers were sealed; they had lids on them. You That's had, right. I goofed. You got, to, <laughs> you got to take the lids off, and probably you could still take those. You could probably keep doing the experiments you have, but just take the lid off of the little. Uh, yeah, the, the lid's on top of the plastic seal for my container, so I'll have to get a different container down below. So, yeah, I'll have figured out. I don't want you to run off yet tonight, Lee. What, what's your time schedule? Oh, well, tonight I'm going to stay here till Rick shuts us down. Okay. Well, we'll be shutting down a, a bit earlier than uh, <laughs> normal in terms of normal being four hours or whatever. Uh, because yeah. I have to broadcast again at uh, about two and a half hours from now, less than two and a half hours from now. <clears throat> so, yeah, and you probably want to close down two I hours. Mind a half hour break, yeah. So basically, uh, less than two hours from now will be hour and a half to three quarters or whatever. We'll shut down. Yeah, so uh, Danny, you on. you've been reading my mind, Danny. You were showing all those uh, bicycle wheels and stuff last week, and I've uh, I've been collecting a couple of old kids' bicycles and nano coating ping pong balls and <laughs> getting ready to <laughs> to make a rotating uh, ball race stuff. But <laughs> it was surprising when you showed that last week. <laughs> I'm I might want to. I only have what I have to show tonight. Uh, shouldn't take but three to five minutes. Uh, it's just a, it's just a work in progress. My idea was to uh, to make dynamic reactors without, uh, I mean, mechanically move it manually without a motor. And by doing that, I end up uh, using uh, planetary gears to keep to uh, rotate the uh, reactors and the eighteen balls. 
And so somewhere along tonight, if we get a chance, I'll show that picture. Okay, thanks, Denny. Um, let me see, let's continue pursuing our, let's finish, make sure we're finished with the CH3 GANs. First of all, there was a question uh, from uh, Space Dream about the pH in Mark's, uh, the big pot with the dark GANs. Uh, Mark, they couldn't see whether it was 6.3 or 6.8 uh, pH on that. Can you clarify? Yep, that's uh, that one was six eight. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yep, so I got a six eight, a six three, a six zero. Oh. Um, oh, what's that bottom one? The bottom one's a five three. Five three. So oh, it's slightly acidic. Yeah, all of them slightly acidic. Five three is starting to get fairly acidic. Yeah, but uh, I, I mean that was my very first one. I I haven't taken a reading on that in a while, so that might be off. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, Zoltan joined uh, us and uh, he may uh, show uh, the gains which he took out yesterday from uh, the, that uh, kit, uh, which became such a greenish black. And what uh, he said, it's interesting when he put a brand new plastic uh, uh, spoon into it to stir it, uh, the plastic spoon became yellow or orange. Even and though the gans is uh, bluish uh, or greenish uh, black. Can Zoltan uh, show some of that experiment? Yeah, I think he can. Zoltan, would you like to? He's not that? talking English. He's uh, typing English. Oh. Hello. My English is uh, so poor. Well, maybe uh, Shandor can translate if necessary. Is that true, okay. Shandor? If needed, of course, I translate, no problem. Okay. Okay, I'll be able to translate. Okay, I'll So this is the gans, uh, the blackish, uh, greenish gans, and uh, this is the spoon. Just a normal uh, disposable spoon. So is that like a permanent stain on the spoon, or is it, can that be wiped off? A kérdezik, hogy ez a kanál az állandó foltot kapott? Nem, ezt most reggel tettem be. He put that in uh, today. A másikat megmutatom, a tegnap kavartam vele. He showed uh, yesterday's spoon, which he used yesterday. Yesterday he shown that this is so the wow, gas is not that's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. Funny. A better some magic camera at Magmutato Moise to me. If he will set up uh, his uh, secondary camera, mobile camera, he will show uh, the setup how it looks like. Let's see, he's attaching a USB camera. Moment. Oh, it's not very much light. Nem nagyon látjuk sötét. Ah, felveszem a dobozt. You try to move it towards uh, toward the light. Yes. Hogy tartsam? Távolabb. Uh, jobbra. Kicsit. Fényhez. Fény. Jobb, 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 jobb. Let's move it to right, right. Now it's okay. We see something. We see bubbles. We see bubbles inside. Tele van buborékkal. Igen, igen. Értem. Csak beszélni nem tudok. Ah, he understands, but he cannot talk well. Okay. So uh, oh. this is making a reddish uh, 
Gans and the, the black which we see, it's uh, the plate itself. That affects the other lemons. Again, raised lemons. No, no. Nano copper plate, it's the black one. It makes big bubbles and it makes something reddish. Tulajdonképpen 8 volt és 36, 360 milliamper. Ah, 360 milliamps. So 0.36 milliamps, 360 milliamps and uh, 0.8 volts. So that's the condition. So purposely he tried to accelerate uh, the process or to change the conditions. Uh, with intention to get uh, some deuterium against. Otherwise, he uses uh, no power. Ellenben a pH értékel az én mérőm szerint ennek a műzének nyolc. But the pH, according to his, uh, who knows how well calibrated the commercial uh, pH meter, it's eight. So it's alkaline. Eight against kilen. 7.9 7.8 it's dropping down a bit 7.7 hot 6 hit against hot now ah 7.6 still slightly slightly alkaline ashik hit against it it's dropping it's 7.5 It stopped at 7.5. No, I should make it against Nidra. It dropped finally to 7.4. Perhaps the uh, pH meter needed to be cleaned more before it was used, too. Valószínűleg jól meg kell tisztítani a pH mérőt használat előtt, desztillált víz. Biztos, hogy igen, már nem volt meg tisztítva. It wasn't clean before. Mm -hmm. So if it's dried something on on it, yes, that was that was that's it. The shake, any word, any any. Firstly, thank you. Okay, thank you. De van egy kérdésem, mi lehet ez? He has a question, what this could be, what he's producing. Well, first of all, it's quite a high um, amperage actually at, what was it, 300 and something, 350 milliamps or something like that. Elég magas az amper. At 0.8 volts, it's uh, around a uh, quarter watt or something like that, I suppose. Um, and uh, with that, because um, I think most of the amperages are usually in the tens of milliamps rather than hundreds of milliamps for producing Ganses. And I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what you get with higher amperages and voltages any anybody have some uh, ideas or suggestions on that for Zoltan mm. Sándor megnézik a másikat másik kettőt ami le van zárva ami két hete három hete van benn he would like to show uh, other two which are closed where he tries to make a tritium gas uh, two setups which are closed uh, boxes since uh, three weeks with okay. a CO2 kit on the bottom and the uh, CH3 on the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, is he got the is he going to start the video for that then? Kapcsolat be a videódat, mutasd meg, légy szíves. Okay.
Oh, this looks uh, to be the gains uh, collected at the bottom. El Junius Huson 8. This was started on uh, June 27th. The up. Fea Harum bent lower visible. And uh, the CH3 uh, hangs into the water and it's open top. It's in a small uh, salad uh, tray or something like that. Or a salad cup. It needs around there, shall There is no any external power source. It's just a normal uh, CO2 kit. And uh, what's his observations? It's a little hard to see with the video. Can he explain more what he sees mm -hmm. and colors and whatnot? Milyen színeket látsz, mert a videó az nem jól adja át, nem jó minőségű. Szürkés fehér. It's a grayish, whitish, yes. És fehér. And white. Na most, hogy mi van a CH, CH3-nál, ott olyan narancsárgás. And in the CH3, he just sees a pure orange color. Változott a narancsárga közben, vagy uh, ugyanolyan színű, mint az elején? Ugyanolyan színű, szerintem. So that orange color is still the same like at the beginning. Na most ott a másik doboz. And here it's uh, the second box. Here he used the nanocoated coil instead of nanocoated plate. Ami távolabbra van a két. There is a larger distance between the two plates, or, or the plate and the uh, coil. It teljesen fehér a fehér por van. Here it makes an absolutely pure uh, gans uh, be, uh, below the zinc plate. As a zinc lemez alatt van, ugye? Igen. So this is below the zinc plate. And it's a white, white, white. Most likely zinc oxide. És itt kívül van, lehet, hogy igen távola. And here he has the CH3 uh, not on, right on the top of the middle that, uh, distance between the two electrodes, but it's a bit uh, on the side. Na most itt uh, ez július elsője, de... This was started on uh, July 1st. Most a doboz tetőtől valószínű, hogy átveszi a színét, nem tudom megállapítani pontosan, hogy milyen színű. Now uh, the color of the top of uh, the box reflects uh, into the image, so he cannot uh, establish exactly what color it is. A CH3 nak már. So it's about the CH3, which is on the top. You cannot see well the color. And so that's it. Very good, thank you, uh, Zoltan. Any questions for Zoltan about that? All right. Well, I'll, let's move along then. Uh, anybody, anybody know the answer to Danny's question about how to make hydrogen gants? Because uh, I don't know how to do that either. Hydrogen GANs as opposed to deuterium or tritium GANs, you mean? Like That's a, right. Okay. <clears throat> well, what about the um, Coca-Cola bottle reactor? Did that, did that not produce atomic hydrogen? And we're told it did. And that could be from the uh, release of the hydrogens in the plastic of the container, or possibly from the uh, some other source of hydrogen in that system. Space Stream says something, or he used additional power, Rick. I don't think there's any additional power put into the uh, Coca-Cola bottle reactor. Um, there was power in terms of there's uh, a gradient from the uh, copper electrodes that were in it.
and there was a talk um, in the last workshop about the uh, patent remember in the patent the cash patent <coughs> we look at the idea of uh, cola bottle uh, on the bottom and cola bottle on the top I guess these are the threads for the the neck and the the two uh, bottles are joined by tubes a couple of tubes so the idea is that the bottom one would be your main reactor and you might have your uh, caustic and whatever electrodes in combination that's creating the uh, the plasma vapor essentially as we understand it and the plasma vapor would be in this uh, area in the upper reactor and then uh, theoretically you could maybe take that off and use it in a third reactor or possibly this and it would be enough in itself to uh, depending what the effects from what what sort of situation you're using it in that was part of the uh, patent, the Kesh patent, uh, showed the two cola bottle, two cola bottles connected together. Kesh has mentioned that before, but <clears throat> then it came up um, in the uh, blueprint teaching, and um, there was a, a discussion, and before we realized that we're in over our heads and didn't really know enough about it, we needed to ask more from Mr. Kesh about that. And uh, um, the idea that the cola bottle reactor was to create the uh, carbon coating on the uh, on the copper electrodes and so on as well to separate the the uh, carbon. But I believe that he was saying that that enables the hydrogen to be released, and it's an atomic hydrogen condition inside. But um, I believe that we need to ask Mr. Kesh about that and see if we can get some clarification. And uh, it might be in the next Knowledge Seekers workshop or possibly in the next uh, Blueprint teaching, I'm not sure. <clears throat> but we're also, in spite of all this talk today about Ganses and so on, we're, we're trying, as, as Mark mentioned earlier, we're trying to sort of... Uh, uh, Veer, veer somewhat away from the actual physicality of the Ganses and whatnot, and uh, get more into how to how to create the effect that the Ganses have inside our uh, of ourselves, and perhaps there's ways that we can use the same concepts in order to uh, find ways. Oh, thank you, Shandor. Perfect. Yeah, there's the cola bottle with the uh, the connecting tubes. And what can we get from this? We see there's uh, a number of entities in that lower bottle. We've got the, uh, looks to be copper electrodes. I'm not sure what the little round ball things would be there. Any ideas um, on that? Radioactive source. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Like uh, americium isotope from uh, right. small or for instance. Okay, I didn't understand that. That's interesting. That to give some scintillation. Mm -hmm. so that was the older version of the technology. Hmm. And that's a little more about the actual uh, process inside with that closed reactor. Uh, diagram under on the bottom there I guess so it shows the actual scintillation the changes that go on you can see the um, the argon and interacts and you end up with these uh, hydrogens some of the hydrogens would be uh, ionized apparently and some would be uh, just atomic hydrogen. You see in the second figure that the 
it shows the atomic hydrogen there, or sorry, the, uh, the molecular hydrogen rather. So I guess is this indicating two different processes that are going on? It looks like. So one is the creation of graphene and the other is the creation of energy perhaps. So the first one would be the creation of energy. You have these H pluses and E minuses separated out and that's how we generate electricity from that uh, gradient. In some of the lectures a long time ago, Mr. Cash referred to this setup and he also told about putting the third and uh, the third bottle here with one tube and uh, he said that uh, due to the shape of the bottle there are different conditions in this area and in this area. Mm. And here at 284 you see something collected here is against Ah, okay. So anyway, the pat pat patent applications are open, so you can download them, you can uh, read the text uh, which is connected to it and to browse through the text for references to these numbers or to the number of the figures, etc. And to find a little more. Yeah, good advice. Thank you very much for that, Shander. Perfect timing. Yeah, it might be good, uh, good, uh, good advice to go back to the original patent application and in view of the information that we have now, we've collected over the last few years, we might be able to see some of these diagrams in, in new eyes with a different viewpoint and uh, be able to uh, make use of them perhaps. Yeah, I used to go back also to the earlier lectures and uh, with today's understanding, we have a different view on many words of Mr. Cash. Mm -hmm. But the principles are always the same, so you can go back and apply everything and uh, get new understanding from it. Because yeah. the uh, source is similar, you might say. Any other comments about anyway, this? In this figure 30, you just uh, notice that there is an argon uh, potassium 40 uh, through beta decay goes on argon. So this is the beta decay of uh, the uh, potassium 40, which is contained in uh, any potassium. It's about 120 parts per million of uh, the uh, potassium in nature uh, contains this uh, potassium-40 isotope. And the potassium comes from the KOH that was added to the uh, potassium hydroxide that was added, correct? To the magic mixture. The, uh, the K factor, the K mixture. <laughs> okay, so then it shows from the uh, beta decay of the potassium, um, we get argon and the interaction between the um, radioactive source and the argon produces a scintillation and it looks like the scintillation provides a EUV which is um, um, ultraviolet and the ultraviolet ends up um, Uh, splitting off the hydrogens I, the ionization uh, creates the electron and H plus and so on there interesting so it's on the kind of fission at a small scale. Yeah, yeah, it'd be very... But, uh, but uh, remember, here in this setup, uh, there is something here.
if you know small detectors, you can buy these days with about fifteen, twenty dollars. I mean, the cheap models. Yeah, you're right. So in this case, the radioactive source actually converts the potassium to the potassium forty. It looks like. But, yeah, so but we do so know that there's also a natural amount of potassium forty in any uh, quantity of potassium as well, like you mentioned, right? Yes. So this would just um, make more of that reaction. In a way, you may not need the radioactive source. Well, maybe you still need it for the scintillation. Okay, any other comments about that, ideas? I, I was just wondering if uh, my mute was on or off. So that uh, radioactive material was in a s type of smoke alarm, wasn't it? Yes. Or uh, you, you do you have do you know those uh, uh, watches uh, which uh, had a phosphorescent uh, uh, indicators? Yes, that was a source of uh, radiation. And to be clear to our viewers, when we were talking earlier about deuterium and tritium uh, uh, gases or ganses, that they are not the actual radioactive tritium that we're talking about. We're talking about the plasmatic uh, strength of tritium and deuterium. So just to be clear on that, that uh, we're not really necessarily playing with radioactive uh, products in terms of tritium and so on. It's the plasmatic energy of tritium. <coughs> That's the way you understand it. So, um, Okay, um, were you done there, Shandor, or did you have something else you wanted to show there? Okay, well, Denny, would you like to... Um yes, it shouldn't take me very long. It's just, I've got it in. A, I have it in a uh, paint file. Let's see if I can pull it up on the uh, share screen. Uh, this, this must be it. I'll do a quick explanation. Uh, let, let me annotate just for a moment. Is that what color is that? Let me just see. Okay, that right there is the crank. When you crank this, it turns everything. You really don't need a flywheel. You could put the crank on this top uh, planetary gear. Uh, so there's three planetary gears involved here. Once you turn the crank, it turns all the reactors, turns the, uh, the top reactor, spins it, 
it turns the 18, it rotates the 18 around in a circle, plus uh, they do spin by, uh, by the way you uh, hold the gears of the planetary reactor. And the bottom one, the, uh, the bottom uh, of the star formation, uh, by holding the, uh, the, um, the connector plate, then uh, it spins the reactors, but, don't, but holds them in position. They don't rotate. And so I just have a, uh, let me see if I need to, I'll have to stop my annotate just a minute. Uh, there. Uh, so, so that, but the, the idea for this was to uh, be able to uh, do a uh, spin the, uh, the dynamic reactors without using electricity, just using the manual input of uh, turning the uh, planetary gears by themselves. Of course, you could put a motor on it, and uh, also you could put MagGrav coils can be placed in the, in the frame or in positions inside of this uh, frame. Let me uh, increase my magnetism. Okay. So just so people can get a quick understanding what a planetary gear is, they can go uh, Google it, just Google planetary gear. Let me see, I think I got it written somewhere. Uh, so, uh, and uh, the outside ring, that's the uh, ring gear, the, the, okay, I can annotate on this, and it shouldn't take me too much longer, and I'll be done. Uh, okay, the ring gear is there. Uh, the planetary gears are these, the sun gears in the center, and this uh, this carrier rod is right here. When this carrier rod is held firm and the uh, ring gear is, is spun, then the uh, planet gears turn. In other words, they will spin the uh, the three base reactors in the uh, little diagram that I had. Okay. Okay, uh, let me minimize this again. Uh, does anybody have any questions on what I've done here and what I'm, what I'm drawing? Because I'm trying to make all, these here, instead of using berry, bearings, I used uh, where it says idler gears, I used uh, little gears rather than than bearings in there. Now uh, you can use bearings where the uh, the top uh, reactor spins and where all the uh, eighteen uh, reactors spin. You can use bearings in there, but uh, between the frame and the planetary ring gear, it doesn't need to have uh, bearings. You can use an idler gear there. Uh, this uh, Lee, does this look like something you could make? Looks a little complicated to me. <laughs> well, I don't know where to get all that planetary gear stuff. Well, you can actually Shapeways had a a, a little plastic one. There are people that do laser cut. Uh, plywood that you can get them made. You can take a, a piece of birch plywood and uh, there's uh, formulas for how to cut the teeth just with a jigsaw uh, and uh, the ratios of them. So uh, let, me, uh, let me annotate again. Let me see if I clear all my little marks, I can do that. And so, uh, uh, the way I have this set up is you see this little gear here? 
That one there that has uh, teeth on both sides of it. This, all three of these planetary gears here. Uh, one, two, three, all have these teeth doubled so that I can uh, rotate it with the idler gears. Uh, the flywheel uh, connects to this idler gear here. This idler gear connects to the, so all three are connected. So when I turn this top one, all three planetary gears turn because I'm turning the rings. Uh, how I uh, down here on the bottom of the base is by holding the carrier firm, say to the uh, to the frame down here. Then the uh, you can go and and Google these and see videos of how they turn and and all of that information's there. Uh, this one, this particular one, a person used. Uh, a uh, a 3D printer to to build this, and uh, he even put in extra little uh, planetary gears inside these planetary gears, and he beveled he beveled the uh, the uh, the uh, gears. Uh, you can see the bevel right here. Maybe if I uh, back out of my annotating again and magnify this uh, you can see it a little better uh, you can see the the way those gears were beveled now he he did that on a uh, a 3d pl uh, plastic printer and so by beveling it they hold they don't slide through the the gear so quickly like if you had an open uh, gearing uh, they could fall through. That's why you need the the carrier. Now this comes from uh, these. Uh, they use these planetary gears in automatic transmissions. They have a series of these planetary gears. Well, you can see why they're called planetary because you got the sun gear in the middle and the planet gears are going around. And you can have any number of these. And that's why I'm saying over here. Uh, I can put 18 planets around uh, that ring gear. And as they spin around, they, 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 as they rotate, they spin around. And so by doing that, now all I have to do is hand crank that. Or if I want to uh, uh, put a, you know, like a, a set up a, a bicycle or something where, where I just pedal it instead of turning it with the hand crank. And the whole point of this was I wasn't going to do it for very long. If I was going to use it for, uh, for health reasons, then I was uh, only going to need it for a short pellet. Someone would turn it while the other person. And the size of it could be made uh, a lot larger. This little design here is uh, about uh, uh, a foot. Uh, a foot by a little over uh it's about uh somewhere around 12 inches uh wide and uh, cubed but it's really cylindrical it's a it's a has a 12 inch radius and it sits uh about uh 18 inches tall so it's really not very big uh i can uh, purchase from save uh shapeways a uh, little planetary gear that's made of plastic that's about uh, four inches in diameter and that way I have to make my uh, reactors small enough to fit the uh, the uh, planetary gears so this is just a, a thought in progress because it made a lot by using the planetary gears it made it a lot simpler to move all of the reactors with just one motion from the uh, uh, from the uh, I can't seem to get my I got all these guys over here. There I go. Just one motion, but turning this hand crank right up there at the top by turning 
this hand crank. So, but if it got larger, then I'd have to uh, turn that by other means. Or maybe I have to put uh, hook an ox into it <laughs> if I wanted to stand inside. And then the the mag drafts, uh, uh would uh, uh, coils can sit in sit inside here. See, there's the frame. It can sit inside. Uh, these uh, these little connectors that connects each planetary gear to the planetary gear. They are they're connecting the ring gear. It's what they're doing because the ring gear is spinning the. And this is the the ring gear, the one on the outside, and that one will rotate. And so I'll connect from. There's three ring gears in here, and actually you can put four if you wanted to when you're starting to do the uh, the uh, spaceship flight. You may want to have uh, another planetary gear up here with a less lesser number of uh, of reactors on it. Say the one of them has 18, and one of them has six or 12, or whatever you choose uh, for the for the size of your of your uh, metal reactors and the size of this. So it can be handmade by uh, making it out of, I'd say, a good quality birch plywood uh, if you're going larger. And of course, uh, you don't have to cut it all in a circle. You can, you can segment, segment the, uh, let me see if you're, let me get back to, to this. You could, uh, Say uh, if you're making it larger, you could cut this portion of plywood and make certain that you got some kind of uh, of uh, system where they'll join together, and then just uh, because they're they're not going to be bumping anything, you could you could even splice a piece over or double up on the on the splice there, so you're not you don't have to cut it all out of one circle. Of a piece of plywood, the plywood being uh, a four by eight sheet of plywood, you could you could uh, eliminate half to make a you could you could make it larger by by splicing the, the segments together. Okay, that's it's a I find it interesting that it's that you could move all of the uh, reactors by one little turn of the wrist. I mean, the turn of the arm up there where the flywheel is because the, the flywheel uh, turn it this direction and this right here will actually turn this direction. These here will actually turn this direction. And these balls will be spinning and they will turn that direction as well. Down here, these uh, the planetary gear will be going around. So will this one, because they're all connected to be turned the same direction. And these balls can turn left. Now you can set it up to where if you want them to turn differently, you can actually uh, change the uh, way the planetary gears will spin on one another. Uh, you're just going to have to place another uh, idler gear in between it. So it's a. This is a found it a, a a pretty simple way of of being straightforward. Planetary gears uh, you can make or you can purchase. Uh, if you have a 3D printer, you can you can make it. There's uh, there's information on the on the internet. To give you the ratios, to even show you how uh, they even have some, where well, you can take the math right off of the ones that are made. So that's uh, that's. I didn't want to go much farther than that and use up too much time. So okay. that's the, that's the end of my presentation. Let me clear this and back out. All right. Thank you very much, Denny. It's an interesting concept there. Well, see, the thing of it is, uh, it's uh, it's not the the final state. It's a, it's a when we're explaining this kind of stuff to different people, it's 
sometimes you may not be able to ju jump from one one concept to the end concept of where we're what we're learning now we may have to to take people through one step after another and if this was a situation where i didn't have electricity i and i had this pre-made because it's going to take electricity to make the thing but if i had it pre-made i would have it in a position where i wouldn't need electricity to to utilize it and that was the uh, that was the point of uh, trying to to make something like this uh, the question to the question i asked myself can i can i make a flight system without having to to power it up with electricity and then this, the same question is can i put my mag grabs in there and and get this to generate electricity and then be able to to get it to power itself uh, that would that was uh another question i have to solve can i use can i use my grab mag grab coils in this system yeah, do i need to place some magnets uh as I turn the gears uh, the old-fashioned way and make me a, a DC generator to power my mag grabs for a short period of time, and those are a few questions I have to ask myself when I start to to design and engineer it. That's it. Thanks. Well, I am. I am. Uh, willing to answer any kind of question right yes <laughs> I, I i'm willing to take a pat on the back too all <laughs> right we'll give you a pat one pat on the back for denny um all right is there any questions for denny's uh gears there gears gear situation All right, well, maybe someone out there will be inspired to come up with a gear-based uh, mag-grav system. Who knows? I've considered such a thing myself, so... Mm, maybe so. the ultimate solution would be to spin the fields and not spin the physicality. Uh, yeah, that's time. what I'm thinking. It, it, that's, the, that's the ultimate. That's what we want. And uh, But if we don't reach there, we or if somebody can't reach there, they can fall back to uh, fallback positions and still be able to to uh, get benefit from them. In a way, the idea of a manual control system or manual um, uh, power system to to get the the system working. It's an interesting idea. It's uh, very much similar to the uh, this idea. Okay, so this was the uh, Hawksby device back in the old days. This is a globe here that's partially evacuated, partial vacuum inside, a glass globe. And this woman has her hands on. This guy's the slave of the family. He's cranking away on this big wheel. To keep the globe going so the woman can put her hands on the globe and cause it to glow a purplish glow came from this globe and that was an actual uh, uh, plasma ball that was back this was back in the 1600s before they even had batteries it's one of the first forms of electricity but the idea i wanted to present was not that but that there's the interaction here it takes two people to create the effect from this device so they have to be coordinated and they have to be aware of each other and so on and actually there would be a third person involved here the uh, the the man of the house would read his newspaper by the light of this glowing globe so they wouldn't have to use a uh, kerosene lamps or whatever else they had back in those times um, it seems like a lot of work to create a, a light to read a newspaper by, but uh, uh, if it works, why not? You know. Uh, think think about the gravity motors. Uh, have you seen the old uh, clocks uh, with pendulum, which had no springs but they had a weight? Yes, right. My uh, grandfather had a grandfather's clock like that. <laughs> 
Okay, so that's the principle. Uh, with proper gears, you can obtain high speed by a, a big weight, which is uh, going down slowly, just to have proper transmission. And also, you can make it with a system with two uh, uh, weights. Uh, while one is going down, time to time, you have to lift the second. And yeah. And they have, if you uh, want to get rid of uh, electric uh, motors, but uh, the system is huge, so it's not mobile. Yeah, it is. It takes. What it does, it gives you a chance. As the uh, gravity is pulling the weight down, it gives you a chance to go do something else. And then when it gets time, it's down there. Then you can go and and uh, reset it and uh, let gravity pull the other weight down. That's what's nice about that. The flywheel that I had put here, I would say, well, I, the, the easiest way is to put uh, water in it. Well, there's no sense to, to put just water in it. You might as well put uh, uh, liquid plasma in it, in the, in the flywheel. And I was just saying, oh, there's a lot of things you can do with, with the variations of this. However, this is not the objective of what we're trying to do right now as uh, engineers. We're trying to, to learn to use the, uh, uh, control the energies of the soul to create the reactors uh, separately and, and uh, have non-physical reactors, uh, as such non-material uh, reactors. Uh, I wouldn't say they wouldn't be physical because I, I think plasma is probably still a form of physicality in its own right but i don't uh, so that would that's your objective as uh, plasma engineers is to eliminate all the the material and go directly to the uh, actual plasma fields and and uh, but in the meantime uh, this gives a another uh, option and of course, this is uh, this is like uh, riding a donkey rather than uh, than doing it the other way than than having the flying a, a spaceship. This is you can compare this to riding a donkey, uh, but at times the donkey will get you there, where a four wheel drive won't. So. Uh, I guess I don't need to explain this anymore. I'm ready for someone else. All right, thank you very much, Denny. Um, we do have uh, Mr. Chen who wanted to get back into the uh, neutron and proton electron and uh, describe his uh, viewpoint on that. Maybe we can get into that now. Okay, I can speak now? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, can I share the screen? Go ahead. Mm. Before, before to explain, I, I have to explain the Queen Chi. Eking, eking, from the traditional Chinese traditional medicine. Because I, before I cannot explain, but uh, after Mr. Cash uh, say, I can explain how is uh, learned, uh, how is uh, um, how is uh, run. Now I I go to the early. You see, this is a. Uh, Emptiness of the universe. The beginning of the universe is emptiness. Is every as they have nothing inside. The first thing is come is from the emptiness. We have a we have a a first matter is coming. But by like Mister just say is a neutron. A neutron, but the neutron is a matter, but because a neutron is a, a plasma, they have a it have a 
a vortex inside here. In the middle of a vortex, you have a hole. You have an emptiness in the middle. With the emptiness, it's beginning to, uh, to get the electron inside. And after the electron go out, we have a proton. In this side, we have this one. Now, this is a, a neutron. After the electron go out, if after the electron go out, we have a proton. Is the emptiness become bigger? We, 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 we have to notice in the proton and the electron, we have a, always a emptiness in, in the middle. With the emptiness, they begin to, uh, uh, to mutation. But like a, a proton, the first time is the, with emptiness, he can get the, uh, the neutron and they divide on two. When they divide on two, this one we have says is, uh, Mm, what is mm, with, with the emptiness he 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 makes the proton and the uh, electron and the proton in the emptiness of protons they begin to have a second neutron and in the emptiness of the electrons they have a proton too. in this way we have a You see, the, in the emptiness of the proton, we have an electron and we have a proton. This is a, a division of the proton. When the division is gone, the proton is not, uh, is not, uh, is, uh, is not still here because it's divided on proton and non electron. In the neutron is the middle step. You see, in the same way, I like, I like this one. In this one, we have a, a on the emptiness of the proton, he, we have a new neutron. And the emptiness of the electron, we have a new neutron. And this one and these two is a step, but intermediate, intermediate step only. The uh, matter is a proton and an electron, but the, uh, the uh, neutron, what the Mr. Sketch say is a dark matter is the uh, intermediate uh, uh, intermediate uh, yellow only and after the proton is divided on one electron and one proton and this one too i want to show you one one a clip i have done with uh, for the um, one minute please Hello, Mr. Chen. We get yeah, one minute, please. Uh, I'll press my video. Now, uh, now, this is uh, emptiness. Now the proton begin to appear, and after the proton appear, you see this is the vortex. In the vortex, in the middle is emptiness too. In the in middle, we have a, a spiral. This is called get the electron. No, no, and after, and after that, we begin with this neutron, the proton, 
give the proton and electron. And after that, you see, this one is, we say, a mutation, which it comes from the emptiness. And this one is the expansion because the neutron divides on two, we have a proton and electron. And after the proton come by get the neutron and the electron get the neutron, we have this one, the mut mutation too. And after this one, the neutron can expand. Right, then after this, I I I, I expand this. First, the proton they divide on electron and po uh, proton, and the proton and electron become two neutron, give two neutron, and then they, they divide. And after they have uh, four mm -hmm. proton, and after they divide, then this one they come the expansion of the matter on on the black hole. Now I understand because uh, Mr. Ketch say I uh, explain I I explain what Mr. Ketch say only that uh, what I know. Right, if this is the one I can uh, I can uh, I can only know the uh, the matter the first matter is the proton. And the proton divide on two, one, I know, no, a neutron, a neutron divide on two, one proton and one electron. In, within the emptiness of the proton and the neutron, we have a second expansion, a mut mutation, mutation to have two protons. And the proton divide. And 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 this and this way, I what I can understand what the Mister Ketch uh, said. I don't know what you you can understand, but I understand in my way is uh, this way because before I cannot know why one one meter become two meter, and two meter become four meter, but now with the proton as an electron, proton and electron, I know. Because with the emptiness, they create a matter. What the Mr. Was, uh, met, what Mr. Get want to say? Because a pro neutron is a, a man. This is a matter of the man, and this is a soul. And the soul is a, from the emptiness of the soul. We have a proton and the emptiness of the man we have the proton too because as this this side is also is also a we can say this one is a brand or the soul is the same thing because because the emptiness is a soul or, or the electron is a soul so this is the same thing what i can understand but today i want to explain to you what i understand what Mr. Ketch say only. Hi, Mr. Chen. Yes. May you explain to us yes. the, the empty nest? Yes, because the empty nest is, is, is have nothing inside. It have no matter. Where does the empty nest come from? The empty nest, because the first time of the universe is uh, emptiness. They have no matter. And in the no matter, they come from the first matter is the uh, neutron. You see? So the emptiness comes from nothing. Yeah, I, 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 from nothing, they no, create no. the matter. But the emptiness comes from the black, the blackness I of black the middle. This is the, uh, now oh, I explain yeah. like this one from the emptiness, they come the first matter, and this first matter is uh, is a plasma because it's a plasma, he have a vortex inside. In the middle of vortex, we have a whole uh, uh, emptiness, 
and in this emptiness, he create a new matter is a proton. Exactly. So you, so I, I'm just trying to understand. So in the empty nest from the middle, we have to feed the middle from the outside, which the middle created. Yeah. So the outside expands itself from elect uh, from a proton and a neutron or a proton and electron. Yeah, and it, it, has it. To, it has to loop itself back. It has to go back into the black hole in order to feed itself to hold the position. Yeah. You know, because... Uh, Maybe Vince, Vince, could you... Vince, are you there? Maybe he could finish this, because this is the point I cannot understand, is how that black hole is filled with energy. The, the empty nest has to be refilled in order to push out energy to be able to recreate itself. The black hole has to be fed. You know, I, now and I, 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 I uh, he do this one. You see, this is uh, in the emptiness. He makes the first uh, matter because the first matter is a plasma. Because he is a matter, he have a plus. He was a plasma. Well, the first one has to be equal. Hmm? Equal. No, because this is a matter. It was a plasma. He have vortex in the middle of vortex is ever emptiness, always emptiness. You see? Yes, I see. I understand exactly the vortex in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Vortex in the middle. They have emptiness. Always have the desk because I, I I I throw this one for you and you can see. All I all I all, the thing that I don't understand is what feeds the vortex in the middle. Because this is a matter, but but uh, the proton the proton is matter, but the matter is the plasma. In the plasma, he have a vortex outside, and in the vortex outside, they have a Middle of the vortex, he have a. Yeah, but it would be the same thing. You'd have a neutron inside that, in there would always be a neutron inside that empty nest. Yeah, so, you have empty nest. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So the neutron is always feeding that empty nest because the neutron holds the empty nest. The neutron is the the point that I'm trying to make is every every um, empty nest holds a neutron, and that's a that's a, that's a, a a moot point, meaning that the black the black hole in the neutron is uh, there's always something falling into the neutron or into the middle of that neutron in order to produce an electron and a proton. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense to you? Yeah, well, I, I, I say uh, for the first time, there was emptiness, and they create the proton. And the proton is a plasma. He have vortex. In the middle of the vortex, we have emptiness. With this emptiness, they create the electron. And the electrons will separate on one proton and one electron. I appreciate that, but I guess you just don't, we have a, a communication gap. I'm I'm from Detroit, Michigan, so sometimes I don't explain myself accordingly. But I'm just trying to understand as a creator um, how that middle, the empty nest, is either created or fed or produced. Yeah, because as you, you, you know the matter cannot produce a matter. Only the emptiness can produce a matter because the emptiness is energy. 
because that has to come from someplace though. That's not a, it's not that's not the boogeyman in the middle. That has to start from someplace. But the thing is, there, there's always fields through the whole universe. There's always energy. There's always fields going through and, these. Well, yes, Rick, and that's what we're really trying to hone our senses into, is the middle of this field. I don't care how finite we take this uh, technology, is that middle takes us to the infinity point that we cannot explain. The energy either comes out of that point or goes into that point. Because either our the our source, our our beginning source is in the is in that empty nest. It's either coming from that middle to us or we are going to it. That is what I'm trying to understand. And maybe I'm not making myself, you know, I don't you know, I'm just a simpleton. My my way of thinking is not, but I just try to take it to a, a simple point where, you know, these last 10 days or 12 days have come down to a soul, a, a pinpoint. We're talking about a minimum pinpoint as we, of an existence. Where do we get that source? Is it in the middle, as Mr. Chen is saying, um, the empty nest or the figure eight i understand all that but it, it's the infinity that goes way down deep into that or is it coming from that depth the depth of that infinity to us well i think the question is yes to both of those there's a two-way street it can't go just one way exactly so we i don't we could just uh our, uh, talk about this whole uh, point, but for, I would I would pay any amount of money for somebody just to explain to me how that power point comes to us because that'll give us the the shape, the form, the pre the presentation that we live in today comes from that explanation right there that that figure eight that empty nest that you know what i'm saying i don't know maybe i take it too too well the like, thing is uh, uh, mark i think you you poked the point there which is um that it's a multi-dimensional thing that you're talking about it's both on the atomic level and it's also in the macro level inside of our bodies as we sit here and and contemplate this uh, idea it also works with the entire galaxy if you look at the black hole in the center of the galaxy and then the black hole that's apparently in the center of the universe and so on <clears throat> so it's um it's not just a simple question um it's actually this the the question at the core of their entire existence and if we understood that totally and completely then it would be we would have no misunderstanding of the entire universe basically we would have the whole picture and it's very hard to to get to that point of course but we can approach it by discussing it and relaying our experiences and our different viewpoints and perspectives as we approach as close as we can to that empty point for example, what does it feel like inside when you touch that uh, empty spot, uh, when we get a little closer to that uh, point of uh, true beingness, of just being with no physicality, just being present without um, associating oneself with the physicality. In other words, our identity becomes identified with the, the voidness in the middle rather than the stuff on the outside around the middle. But yet the, the uh, stuff around the outside, like our body or the planets uh, or the star systems in our galaxy and so on, are all necessary to um, form that uh, gradient between the middle and the other stuff. If, it, if the other stuff wasn't there, then there'd be no gradient. There would be no middle. It would all be middle, and that doesn't work. 
because oh. uh, you see in the emptiness, they, uh, this is a spiral of the uh, power. In the emptiness, we have a spiral of the power like uh, a galaxy. In this point, these keys create uh, energy and he create a, a, a matter. Not a um, not matter, create matter, but on the emptiness, he create a matter. It's in the same thing in the... Here? It create a spiral too. And here, create a matter. And this one, the proton, Uh, again, let's say a proton create this one and a neutron, and this uh, electron create this a neutron. Well, what I, I what I understand, uh, Mister said say only I explain uh, what he said. Be always he always said on the middle of the uh, of the matter. Like a, a proton, he say in the middle, and, and we have a electron, and they say separate electron, and we, when he separate, we have a proton, and the electron. But in the middle of the electron, he say he always have a hole. It's emptiness. In this emptiness, they have a spiral because this is a vortex. Where we uh, we can know this is a vortex because I take a black one. And this one too. And this one, we say we say uh, emptiness, but it's really a, a a soul. And in the middle here is a soul too. And with a soul, we create a matter. I know what I know. I I explain only. In this way, I can explain. The, uh, the, uh, from the emptiness, he creates a matter, and within the matter, he has an emptiness, he, he creates a matter, and he begins to separate to this state. We, I say, the um, uh, mutation, and this state, I say, is the uh, evolution, the I say, a separation or something. I, 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 I don't remember the, the say. What I one minute I. I I I, I this is a mutation. Is this is expansion expansion? Mm. Okay, now um, this is the mutation, and this is the expansion. And after we have a mutation, and after we have expansion, but the state of the neutron. Is is like this case say is the black matter. He he is not stable, but the stable the matter is proton and electron is stable. And this C state is the intermediate state only, and this proton too. And after this one, he create one proton and one electron, and this one one proton and one electron. And and, and 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 they go away. They expand by, uh, with uh, two exponential. Exponential. Okay, perhaps we can go back to uh, Mark's question again. And uh, Mark, maybe yeah? you can um, uh, try your question again, and maybe just rephrase it a little differently, or just just say it again, perhaps. And maybe that'll trigger off um, some other, uh, you know, deeper uh, 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 concepts that we can sort of uh, play yeah. off of here. Yeah. Can you uh, say something, yeah. Mark, about that? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Rick. I, I, I don't know. My thought process comes in when it comes in, and. 
for me to, you know, this is Mr. Chin's idea and how he sees it, and um, he's well, he's he's relaying it the way that he, that he saw Mr. Cash presenting. It's it's more Cash's mm -hmm. idea, which is seems pretty close to what Cash said, I think. Yeah, it, it is. But 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 when Mr. Cash um, presents things, he leaves it at, as an open end. He lets us decide or try to understand um, the portions. Uh, that's the riddle in, you know, that's his teach, that's how he teaches us. That it, it, he could just tell us everything. He knows a lot more than what we do. He could just come out here and just tell us everything and we could just follow along uh, like sheep. But um, he, he allows us to be creative in our own minds and our own abilities to bring out ideas that brings a lot of things to the table. Yeah. But a lot, you know, more so than, than I could think of. I'm, we're, my, I, this has expanded my brain more than I have ever could ever understand. I used to be just a painter. I think I'm more than just a painter now. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> no, but, but you see this infinity. The well, infinity. I understand the ex, uh, the uh, you know, the infinity of our expansion of knowledge is just exponential, and that's what the infinity does for us. Is once we open up the door. Uh, to knowledge, and I think that's the point Mr. Kesh was trying to make is once we once we open the door and we start to step through it and we start to understand it, um, it makes us feel good. Um, but we uh, discipline um, our soul, our, our, our love, our giving, our sharing. These are all things that were uh, are being introduced to us as a whole, as a, for, for 7 billion people to get on board and to try to tell people, hey, you got an infinity loop and you're, uh, you're do, you, you could actually do a lot better than what you're doing. You, to try to convince people of that at this point at, at our time and space is just incredible. But we have the opportunity to do it. Um, we're enjoying doing it. It's if anybody ever feels like it's a burden to them, they should stop for a while and step back and uh, just appreciate what, what, uh, what's been given to us as uh, a humanity uh, point of view. We have an opportunity to step, uh, take a step forward. I feel like we're going one baby step forward instead of two steps back. It's an old saying, one step forward, two steps back. We're so used to that now. We've been so used to that crap fed to us that we're always on the losing end of That's, that's absolutely <laughs> right, Mark. And that's the part of the sort of the, the poverty mentality and the poor me victim mentality and the, the uh, mentality of scarcity and so on. And now I think we're, we're transforming into a different... Uh, um, thought form, a different attitude about everything. And it's a lot more, you know, uh, g let's go full, t full tilt ahead, basically, rather than uh, with all the uh, restrictions and so on. But, uh, yeah, carry breaker, on. That's, breaker, okay, breaker. Breaker, breaker. I, I have to do some house cleaning here. We yeah. got about 15 minutes left. Yeah. And so that's what I wanted to bring to mind. Uh, also, uh, Mr. Kess was even referred to how we could engineer uh, this particular electronic plasma. Uh, he, he gave it, gave us a hint in doing that. But I'm, I'm still going to, to go back. We got 15 minutes, uh, and so that's it. 15 minutes to go. Yes, thank you, Denny, for our our little breaker breaker check there, because we we re really appreciate what Rick does for us. I mean, brother, you have, I mean, the, the tilt that you're going is just incredible. We come once a week 
And, you know, it's, we put a lot of other thought into it, but you're doing it every day now, day after day. I, I, I just, I just give, I give strength to your voice, your, your vocal voice, well, let alone your thought process and everything else that's going on inside you. I, I send everything I can to you because, man, your strength is our strength. I just would like to say thank you for everything you do for us. I, it's, I mean, we got hours and hours of teaching, and I sit here at night when I come home from work, and I try to mull through it, listen to it, understand it. But you're there in the thick, in the trenches, and thank you very much for what you do for all of us. Well, thank you, Mark. appreciate that very much. And uh, I was just saying to my sister who is visiting here today that... Uh, I'm so thankful for, like, virtually every day there's people thanking me for the work I do and so on. I'm just so humbled and uh, and thankful for the support that I get and, and the fact that people are out there and they are interested in this this teaching. And it's not just about plasma reactors, that's for sure. It's more, way more than that. Um, and uh, it's very encouraging to to uh, go forward into this, it's a new realm in a way, we touch on things that are spiritual and are close to our, our essence and our hearts and so on, and, uh, it, can, and be, it can be quite emotional sometimes and has been in, in this workshop and surprisingly at times. And, um, but that's all part of, uh, part of our interacting with each other at this point. And, I think it's uh, quite uh, wonderful and magical the way it's all coming together and uh, it's definitely been a, a, a transition or a uh, uh, evolution you might say in the last four years of this group and uh, different people have come and gone some have been the same through the whole thing and it's uh, it's undergone quite a transformation and, and I'm very happy with the way things are going in the group and on the planet. I really feel the changes that are going on and, and that we're due for really big changes uh, coming up like uh, immediately, like maybe this week <laughs> sort well, of thing. Well, Rick, Rick, if no changes ever happen, the change has already happened for me and for a lot of us in this group. I just mm -hmm. want your sister to know. That Rick, can I say something? Can I just finish is, for one second? One second. I just want Rick's sister to know that she can be very, 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 very proud of her brother. For where her brother has taken us to a point where where we might have a chance that she can be very, very proud of her brother. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. No, what are why Thank you, I want to say say is, is my imagination I try to sen simplify what music is say only I don't I don't don't want to influence maybe my imagination is wrong but I want to have to say and if you agree I'm happy I'm you if you not agree I'm all, all always happy because something maybe I wrong but I accept everything you say i i but i imagine what mr cash say i imagine this way is easier to understand only thank you uh, for your listening anyway yeah thank, thank you, you mr chan that was uh, it was good stimulation for us uh, to be able to conceive i appreciate your simple drawings because uh like mark says we're simple people and we need to but that doesn't mean we don't go deep at the same time because it takes uh, simple in order to go deep essentially so um, you know it's like the vacuum the the voidness in the middle that we're looking at in the diagram it's how simple can you get it's the absence of everything that we know of other than perhaps fields and uh, yet it's the in a way the hardest thing to to get to from the physicality perspective mm -hmm. so interesting 
because uh, you, you know, I, I always say the electron is the soul and the body is a uh, uh, proton, like Mr. Kesh say. But the electron and the proton have a hole inside, in the hole is emptiness, they create the uh, matter, not the matter, uh, create matter, like Mr. Kesh say only. In this way, I realize that in the emptiness, we create a matter only. Like a soul, like Mr. Sketch like I say, always with our soul, we create a matter for the aircraft. He always say, not far from the matter, from our soul. And we can uh, go to this uh, skyship with our brain only, with our soul only. Not, our, not, not with our body, not with a matter. Why we have to create a matter from our soul? Anyway, thank you. Great, thank you very much. Any other um, comments about that? I would like to say that he does a very good job and a very good concept, and we really appreciate all that Mr. Chin brings to the table. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very good. Um, so just looking at the chat here. Uh, Estella says, uh, infinity blessings our bodies have been disconnected from the source energy we are discovering as we build plasma fields in our bodies we will tune into the plasma field of the universe okay and later says meditation no thinking Now she says, I am here. <laughs> okay. Rick, if, uh, it is, um, maybe Vince could just maybe highlight what we were talking about or just give a, a, a small, you got to go in like five minutes, I understand, but mm -hmm. we wanted you to go to the division of the, the, um, of the, um, female, um, Egg. Right, I, I did have a, a picture of that. Let me see if I can get that again. Sorry, Vince, to put you on the spot. <laughs> okay, I'll bring up the Wikipedia here. This is uh, the only, it's hard to get uh, the correct uh, pictures. I'm still not sure if I got it. This is on, uh, it's called Developmental Biology, study of the process by which animals and plants grow and develop. Let's make it bigger so people can see. And they have a little uh, diagram here that might be useful. And I'm wondering, is this what you were talking about, Vince, or are you talking about the the actual um, splitting of the cell? This is the initial stages of embryo, embryogenesis, I guess you call it. So in a way, we have in, in the first... Uh, picture here we have the pronuclei and the pronuclei end up multiplying essentially from yeah, the cleavage that polar the polar body that polar see the little polar body yeah here, yeah seems like the and then the second picture has that too mm good point 
So is that what is that the black hole that feeds the middle that pulls the two apart in the nuclei? What's that guy doing in the middle there? <laughs> that's what I that's what I love about Mr. Kesh. He he says that, you know, he calls out the scientists that say, well, you know, there's parts of the science that we don't really understand and we won't talk about that part until people poke us about it. And when we do get poked about it, all of us will gather together and say, don't worry about that. We won't talk about that at that point. Well, I, I mean, if we wanted to look into it in more detail, the scientists would have more detail on this this process. Uh... They, they, they would they would not like me in the science field. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ask the tough questions is the problem. <clears throat> but we can see, um, if we sort of just look at this as something to go off of for the next few minutes here, we see the fertilization, cleavage, and day three compaction. So something's happened. Like in day two, there's sort of a bunch of random parts but by day three the, the see the center core the black holes have all gotten together in the center so it's like the the seeds what is it called the pro nuclei's or the the seed the, it seems to either be attracted to that center void point or they're attracted to each other or maybe just from the shape or something, but there seems to be some kind of gradient happening that they're attracted toward the center at least. And then what happens is we get this uh, a different kind of cell is created because of the um, strength of the fields is different with these central um, uh, central nuclei, let's say. And that seems to create this differential between the central nu central cells and the outer cells. And that differentiation, they call it, by day four, leads to um, what you see in, in day five. And then they throw what's called, I don't know where that came from, but cavitation. <laughs> so cavitation indicates to me that's that's when things get going with uh, you well, start to have lots of fields. Cavitation. There's fields with cavitation. There's you yeah, know like, a cavitation is like in a boat or in a propeller where it's a void. It's an empty space or it's black. That's right, exactly. And that's it's only meaning creation of a cavity. Right. So either way, that creation of a cavity enables it's in a vacuum condition essentially inside the body so it enables the uh, the ability for plasma to flow the, the spiral effect the spiral if you look at that picture you could just see the progression of left to right left to right le or i'm sorry right to left 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 all the way through that hole and then it, once it goes down to the middle then it goes Left to right, left to right, left to right. Then it goes from right to left, right to left, right to left. That's how the spinning of our spirals go, or the or our coils go, or our nature goes, or the shell of a, a shell goes. And once it once again, we go right back to that middle point. And you know what? We should just we should just end this conversation tonight. It's it's three thirty. Take a break, Rick. Take it. Take this to to the next session, and just think. We're at that spiral point, right down to that black hole. If we can figure out how the feeding of that black hole is, if if, if Mr. Cash feels like it, but he's on holiday now. We got 18 days. Let's all just go to the beach and enjoy the summer and watch our vegetables grow. And that's what I'm going to do. He, he, you know what? This is so, I'm so happy that I have about another 18 days to go out in my backyard, cut the grass, watch my vegetables grow, 
I can come back to this now. I am so comfortable in this technology that if anybody needs help, anybody wants help, any you know, I'm just a guy from Detroit, but I'm very happy. I can kind of see the sickle, the secular uh, progression of this, and, and it, we're so close to finding out the middle of of the in and out. And I, I with my capacitors, I'm almost uh, I almost understand the the plus and minus of all this giving and taking stuff. There has to be a central point. The central point has to be fed. The the feeding has to be an output and an input, just like our picture shows, just like that purple picture shows. Does the, does, the, does the come from the top or does it come from the bottom? And does it flow from the sides outward? All that is a yes. All that's a yes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch my vegetables grow. I got some cucumbers and some tomatoes and some peppers. And I have some nice... You know, since I've been uh, enjoying the Gans water, and I don't eat a lot of food anymore, but uh, the fruits and vegetables that I eat fulfill me, and I'm happy, and I'm going to enjoy the, the last half of the summer here because I'm ready to get going come September or, or the end of, or the 1st of August. But really... Let's have, uh, let's be inspired, people. Let's enjoy ourselves for the next couple of weeks and be happy and talk and, and, and be inspired. That's how I feel from here from Detroit. Okay, thanks for the words of inspiration there, Mark. Appreciate that. Okay, I think I will wrap it up for tonight. That's been a very interesting session, as always. And I thank everyone for the active participation here. That's what it's all about. And when you guys are active, then it makes us, everyone active that listens to this conversation. So we're active in finding that voidness within ourselves and within our experiments. And knowing that that is actually the true source of our energy and of our life so more on that as we go along because i think you hit it right on the mark there mark in terms of uh we have to learn how to feed this uh this voidness that we have and in a way that um, uh, enables it to to grow perhaps and to to be even more present than than uh the more limited amount that it may be at this time. So we'll definitely be working on that as we go along and try to uh, move a little more away from the physicality, but we'll always come back to the physicality examples uh, as we need to for explanations and demonstrations and whatnot, just to just because we need a little more confirmation of our true existence as we go along I think <clears throat> it's nice to have <clears throat> a little bit of confirmation every now and then and that's what we get in this group I think so thank you all for the confirmation tonight and uh, see you next week and also people can uh, tune in to the blueprint for peace for humanity which starts in about half an hour here that's at uh, 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, Central European time and the links are on the Cash Foundation the usual sites and Facebook and wherever alrighty well thank you everybody I'm gonna end the live stream now